Hello students, myself, Dr. Divya Ghildeyal, in continuation with my lecture series for AKTU Engineering Physics BTEC first year, today I will be briefing you wave optics interference portion. So let us first have a look at the syllabus. What is the syllabus? Syllabus of interference is coherent sources, those sources that are derived from the same source of light, because of which they have the same frequency, same wavelength, and uh, intensity varies. Interference in uniform and wedge-shaped thin films, two cases of reflected and transmitted light, both for uniform and wedge-shaped thin film, where you will be deriving an expression for path difference in uniform and wedge-shaped thin film, which results in interference pattern. The reason for an extended source of light when we are performing practicals in the physics lab, Newton's ring and its applications. What is most important in this part of your syllabus is the formula for path difference in the case of uniform film or uniform thickness thin film. Two mark question in section A, what are coherent sources? Can two independent sources of coherent be, uh, sources be coherent? Two mark question section A, what is the necessity of an extended source of light? Section C, 10 mark question, derive an expression for wavelength due to Newton's ring experiment or write the applications of the Newton ring apparatus or a numerical on Newton ring formula, lambda equal to dn square upon 4pr or a numerical on path difference because of interference in uniform thin films. Okay, so let us begin with the syllabus fast. What are coherent sources? Before we begin with that, let us just take a very quick idea of what is exactly interference. Interference word is derived from the English word to interfere. That means one person is going on a straight road and the other person interferes. So what happens? We have one wave of light with Y1 and the other with Y2. When they interfere, then from the principle of superposition of light, V uh, fringes are formed from the principle of superposition of light, Y becomes equal to Y1 plus Y2. Conditions where constructive interference is obtained gives the maxima and where destructive interference is obtained gives the minima. This results in fringe pattern. So this is what basically interference of light means that when two waves of same frequency and having constant phase difference traveling in the same direction and in the same region of the medium are allowed to superimpose over each other, there is a modification in the intensity of light in the region of superposition. This phenomena is known as interference of light. And when resultant amplitude due to two waves is equal to the sum of amplitudes due to individual waves, then interference is known as constructive interference. And when resultant of amplitude is due to difference of two in amplitudes, then it is known as destructive interference or minima. The necessary condition for us to observe interference pattern is coherent sources, monochromatic source of light and path difference between the interfering rays. So what are coherent sources? This question is asked in section A. Define coherent sources. Coherent sources, firstly, remember, is the basic necessary condition 
for interference pattern to observe. So two sources of light are set to be coherent when they have a constant phase difference between them. And in order to meet this requirement, the two sources must be emitted from the same source. And this is possible only when their origination is from the same source of light. At times, one mark question in section A itself is asked that can two independent sources be coherent? The answer to it is no, because independent sources cannot maintain the requirement of constant phase difference between them. So this is a very favorite question of section A. Now, coherence. You can divide it again into temporal coherence and spatial coherence. Coherence, that means the average time during which the field will remain sinusoidal or will have a definite phase relationship. That is the average length for which the field remains sinusoidal, that means in the form of a sine wave, is called the coherence length of the wave. And length is distance into time. So C is speed of light and tau C is the time taken by the uh, for maintaining this coherence length and frequency is one upon time so the frequency spread of a spectral line is the order of inverse of coherent time tau c the quantity del mu by mu or lambda by del lambda represents the monochromaticity or spectral purity of the source Monochromatic, that means single wavelength source. So spectral purity Q is equal to lambda upon del lambda or del mu by mu. Spatial coherence is a measure of the phase relationship between the waves reaching at two different points in space. What are the most common methods of producing coherent sources in the lab? You must have heard your famous Young's double slit experiment. Fresnel's biprism, Lelot's single mirror, all these give rise to coherent sources. But I will explain you right now that even a thin film will also give rise to coherent sources. And interference is produced by two methods, division of wavefront and division of amplitude. Then you should also be remembering one Stokes treatment which is applied in the case of reflected light and not transmitted light is that when light wave is reflected from a denser medium, it always suffers a phase change of pi or a path difference of lambda by two. Now your uh, syllabus begins interference in thin films, which is the most common day-to-day uh, -day example of this case you must have seen when soap bubbles are kept in front of sunlight, they give rise to lovely colored fringes. This is an example of thin film interference because the soap bubble is very thin. Or if you have seen oil spread on the road or even on water, you must have observed colored fringes coming up on it. Now, how do these colored fringes come? These colored fringes are because of the interference pattern. How does it happen? See, this is a thin film. Look at this diagram here of thickness T. Now, the film is a very thin film, but in the diagram, I have made it broad so that you understand it first. Let ray of light, suppose I tell you the general case of soap solution. So this ray of light will be coming from your sun. Let AB be the incident light. When this light is incident on this thin film, part of it will be reflected and part of it will be refracted into the surface because of refractive index change. And we apply Snell's law when we are deriving the formula for path difference. So my incident light AB partially got reflected across BC and partially got refracted along the path BD. 
from my simple laws of optics i know that if i draw a normal then angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection and from this normal this angle is equal to angle of refraction now inside this medium of thin film of refractive index mu my ray of light after coming here will suffer again reflection inside the thin film if this is totally uh, uh, see through or not opaque and then it will come out like this so what is exactly happened is that ray of light has come here it has got refracted it suffered a reflection inside the soap solution and now it has come out if i drop a perpendicular from this point on this ray then path beyond eh is same giving rise to a lovely fringe pattern here which will be observed by human eye out here now how did this fringe pattern come i told you three conditions should be there for fringes to come coherent sources have a look at this diagram properly b and e become your coherent sources path difference is b h path difference b h path difference becomes b h coherent sources and my monochromatic source of light three things are there for me and now immediately i will get an interference pattern here so this is my ray diagram for thin film of uniform thickness now let us derive an expression for path difference before we start deriving the expression i will tell you a shortcut for the same look at the diagram again a b is incident light b c is reflected light b d is refracted light and d e is again reflected light and e f is the emergent ray a thin film of refractive index mu and thickness t is taken ab the monochromatic source of light of wavelength lambda is incident on it path beyond eh is same and path difference between the two rays that is it is given by bd plus de in the film so i will take refractive index mu along with it and bh the additional path traveled in a so my path difference formula becomes mu times bd plus de minus bh angles b d n and n d e from my simple laws of optics will be same equal to r hence they are two congruent triangles with both angles same here one side common that is why my bd will become equal to de because of these two congruent triangles now bd equal to de we will put it here in this expression and what do we get path difference is equal to 2 because bd plus de i have put equal to 2 so it becomes equal to 2 mu bd minus bh wo bahar rakh liye hai kya minus bh from triangle bdn bdn we get cos r is equal to nd upon bd cos is base upon hypotenuse so this becomes n d upon b d this is angle r here and then b d is equal to d n upon cos r and what is d n d n here is the thickness of my thin film so it becomes d n is equal to t upon cos r similarly taking triangle b h e b h e this triangle this is a perpendicular that has been dropped here and b h e this angle sin i what is the formula perpendicular upon hypotenuse so sin i becomes equal to 
बी एच अपॉन बी ई सो बी एच इज इक्वल टू बी ई साइन आई बी ई इज बी एन प्लस एन ई सो दिस बिकम्स इक्वल टू बी एन प्लस एन ई इन टू साइन आई एंड बी एन प्लस एन ई फ्रॉम सिमिलर ट्राइंगल बिकम्स इक्वल सो इट बिकम्स टू बी एन साइन आई अगेन फ्रॉम ट्राइंगल बी डी एन सिमिलरली वी गेट टेन आर इज इक्वल टू बी एन अपॉन डी एन पुटिंग ऑल दीज वैल्यूज इन द इक्वेशन फॉर पाथ डिफरेंस वी गेट इक्वल टू टू टी टेन आर साइन आई and path difference bd minus bh bd value we have just calculated and bh we put the values and tan theta is sin theta upon cos theta so we put the value of tan r here multiplying numerator and denominator of second term by sin r we get the formula for path difference now we will simplify this further by using snell's law which states that mu is equal to sin i by sin r we will keep it here using sin square theta plus cos square theta equal to 1 we simplify this expression further and then since this is a case of reflected light from stokes law we add an additional path difference of lambda by 2 and we get total path difference equal to 2 mu t cos r plus lambda by 2 now in order to apply the conditions for maxima and minima constructive interference or maximum intensity is given by effective part difference is equal to even multiple of half wavelength and minima or destructive interference is given by 2n plus minus 1 lambda by 2 for n equal to 0 1 2 etc positive sign is taken when n is 0 1 2 negative is taken when n is 1 2 3 putting these conditions here we get the formula for maxima and minima thank you